Hello, everybody. My name is Ben Schrader. I am a front end developer here at Esri on our real time GIS product team. Uh, most of my job here involves working on ArcGIS Velocity, which if you're not familiar uh, with that, it's a really cool cloud native add on capability for ArcGIS Online, uh, supporting real time and big data analysis. Uh, so as part of uh, my job here, I've become pretty well acquainted with authentication and authorization uh, within the ArcGIS ecosystem from a front end point of view. Now, one of my favorite things, and hopefully one of your favorite things about ArcGIS is how developer friendly this whole ecosystem really is. As a developer, it's likely that you've wanted your custom app to communicate with ArcGIS, whether that means letting users work with their content in your app, uh, maybe using Esri's location services like geocoding or base maps within your app, uh, or incorporating some other bit of ArcGIS functionality in a project that you've created. While the umbrella of authentication and authorization seems a bit esoteric, uh, the fundamentals are less intimidating than they may first appear. In fact, there are a number of ways to easily and safely expose ArcGIS identities and content to your application. Instead of a deep dive into author authorization and authentication, I'll focus this presentation on how you can easily set up an ArcGIS-based authentication workflow within your custom front-end app with no hassle. Now, as I begin to discuss authentication in ArcGIS, I'd like to provide a quick disclaimer even within the entire ArcGIS ecosystem, the number of options to handle authentication in a custom app are vast. You've got different technologies, different stacks, different paradigms to work with, and uh, it can be overwhelming. Um, you could leverage API keys if your app consumes ArcGIS location services. And in fact, uh, there are many use cases where I think that is probably the most appropriate option. Um, the alternative to API keys is using an ArcGIS identity, which you might have previously known as a named user login. As the name named user login implies, ArcGIS Identity allows users to authorize your app for use with the content and services to which they have access. It's this second authentication method I'll focus on because the process is a bit more complicated. Uh, but I'll still be providing some links for more information about using API keys at the end of this presentation. Both API keys and ArcGIS Identity are also supported in our libraries to work with other mapping technologies, including Leaflet, Mapbox, GLJS, and Open Layers. API keys are fully supported in these libraries, uh, but at the time of this presentation, ArcGIS Identity is only supported in a limited capacity. So if you're using any of those three libraries, I would encourage you to check the documentation for the most up-to-date information uh, about which parts of ArcGIS Identity are and aren't supported. Uh, and then I have this sort of obnoxious list of other languages and technologies just to sort of illustrate that even beyond the front end JavaScript world, um, if you're working within the ArcGIS ecosystem at all, uh, regardless of what coding language uh, or framework you're using, there's probably a, a, a solution uh, to make authenticated, authentication and authorization within ArcGIS simple. So those are just a few examples. Um, if you ever find yourself in need of one of those libraries, I definitely encourage you to check them out. They're all fully supported um, and actively developed. So here's a common scenario web app developers encounter. You have a custom JavaScript application and you want users to be able to log in with their ArcGIS Online or enterprise credentials so they can access their content such as feature layers or map services directly in your app. The first thing you need to do if you want to accomplish this is register your app so ArcGIS can have the information it needs to essentially talk to it. If you have an ArcGIS developer subscription, you can sign into the ArcGIS for Developers website and register a new application by way of the OAuth 2.0 tab pictured here on the left. Doing so will provide you with a client ID and client secret credential you'll use to access a user's content on that user's behalf. Another way to register your app is directly through ArcGIS Online. After adding your web app as a new item, go to the app settings, scroll down to app registration and click register. You'll need to add uh, one or multiple URIs here, which are valid addresses that users of your app can be redirected to after they successfully log in. Be sure to keep this information up to date if the URL of your web app changes in the future. And I'll just say personally, I always like doing it uh, with the second method directly through ArcGIS Online. Uh, just because I like to think of all my custom web apps as content in the same vein as my feature layers, my map services, things like that. Uh, it just makes sense to me and it makes it easy to organize. So uh, either of these options are valid, um, do what makes sense for you. Now, of course, comes the fun part. With a registered app, you've done everything you need to do on the ArcGIS side. 
So as JavaScript developers, we know there are a number of approaches we can take to implementing authentication on our end. I'm going to recommend two specifically, uh, which is the ArcGIS API for JavaScript, which is an obvious candidate if you're already leveraging it in your app, uh, and ArcGIS REST.js, which is a fairly new open source JavaScript library that makes working with the ArcGIS uh, REST API a breeze. Um, just as a note, you may also be inclined to write this logic from scratch in your application uh, using the ArcGIS REST API endpoints. Uh, while I would think that's a great idea as a learning exercise uh, in the real world, I would still recommend ArcGIS REST.js as the sort of advanced option since it accounts for a lot of different workflows and nuances. And of course, it being an open source project, you are free to contribute to it as you see fit. I won't go into too much detail about how to implement authentication in ArcGIS REST.js here, but I do encourage you to check out the documentation uh, on named user logins or ArcGIS identity, which provides easy to follow instructions. And of course, you're also free to ask uh, the large contributor base for help uh, within the repository for that as well. Um, it's a very nifty library and I highly recommend checking it out even if you don't plan on using it uh, right now. But let's circle back to the first of these options. So if you're using the ArcGIS API for JavaScript, uh, already in your app, I'm happy to report that most of the hard work is taken care of for you. The API's Identity Manager class is responsible for managing user credentials, which includes everything from the login flow to keeping track of which users currently signed into your app. I'll demonstrate how quickly and efficiently you can add authentication to your app with the ArcGIS API for JavaScript by showing you a small web app I've made. All right, so to illustrate just how easy it is to use the ArcGIS API for JavaScript to authenticate with the rest of the ArcGIS ecosystem, uh, I've created a very simple web app here, uh, just consists of two files, an index.html and a script.js. Uh, and here in the index.html file, as you can see, there's just a lot of very basic boilerplate. Um, I'm loading up the JavaScript and the CSS files for the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. Uh, and then I've just created a, a very simple page where I have a heading that says, welcome to my web app guest. What we're actually going to accomplish uh, with this app is changing that so that instead of guest, it says the name of the user once they're logged in. I've also created two buttons, a login button and a logout button. The login button uh, is displayed by default, whereas the logout button is not. Uh, and so as you can imagine, once the user is successfully logged in, we'll wanna switch that so that the logout button shows up for the user and the login button is hidden. And then I'm just loading my script.js file, which we're going to go over to now, and that is where the magic happens. Uh, so let's take this line by line. Um, here's our require function, which if you've used the ArcGIS API for JavaScript uh, before, you should be very familiar with. We're using that to load in uh, three separate uh, classes here. We've got the portal class, the OAuth info, and identity manager. Uh, the portal class is going to be uh, where we access things like the user's information, their content, anything. Uh, within their, um, their, their account or their organization uh, that they have access to, you'll be able to access uh, via that class. Uh, the OAuth info sets up a lot of the plumbing um, for setting up the login flow. And then Identity Manager is sort of an umbrella class that's responsible for handling a lot of the logic uh, pertaining to logins, authentication, things like that. And uh, it's, it's responsible um, for the, the simplicity of this workflow, really. Uh, and then very simply here, I just uh, have three variables that I'm assigning to different HTML elements uh, within our page. Uh, that'll just be easier uh, later on when I'm adding some event listeners and things like that. Um, so I've got the login button, the logout button, and then of course that greeting message, uh, which we're going to change. And then I'm setting up a new instance of the OAuth info class here. Um, very importantly, I'm passing in the app ID, which you'll get uh, via ArcGIS Online or via Enterprise after you register the app there. Um, I'm setting a pop-up to false because when I want users to click the login button, I'd like them to just be taken to uh, the login page within the same window instead of via pop-up. Of course, you're free to change that as well. And importantly, um, there's this portal URL uh, property here. Um, if you're using ArcGIS Enterprise, this is where you'll want to put your ArcGIS Enterprise URL. Um, but if you're just using ArcGIS Online like I am, feel free to leave this out. Um, but it's it's worth noting regardless. There are a couple other properties, um, and you can reference the OAuth info section of the documentation uh, to learn what those are. Uh, but then we're going to just pass that OAuth info, or I should say register it, uh, with the Identity Manager. Um, so this line may seem simple, but it's actually very important, so, so definitely don't forget it. Uh, and then some basic JavaScript stuff here. I'm just adding an event listener to the login button 
um, which we'll call this get credential method on the identity manager. And that get credential method is what's responsible for, um, you know, once you click on that button, it'll take you to the login page. And then once the user logs in successfully, they're taken back. Uh, so this uh, get credential method is sort of responsible for kicking that off. And then uh, what some folks might forget about, but I think is no less important, is that you also need to support a proper log out flow, right? So if the user should want to log out, we have this very convenient destroy credentials method, uh, which will remove all the credentials from your web app. Again, log the user out, and then I'm just reloading the web app. Um, I, I'm guessing you can think of a more sophisticated method of handling a logout gracefully, a little better UX than that. But for the sake of uh, demonstration, uh, that's what I'm doing here. And then I've got this handle login success uh, function that I've created, and that's going to kick off as soon as the user successfully logs into our app. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm creating a new instance of the portal class, setting its auth mode to immediate. And then what I'm doing is I'm loading the portal. Uh, and once that's loaded, you'll see in my console log here when I show the output, I have access to you know, the ability to query the portal for items. I can get the user's information. I can get organization information, pretty much anything uh, that you'd want to access as part of your app's workflow. And then again, just some, some basic JavaScript stuff here. Um, I'm hiding the login button, showing the logout button. Uh, and then I'm actually changing the text content of that greeting. Instead of saying, um, you know, welcome to my app guest, it says welcome back. And then I'm actually grabbing the user's full name uh, from this portal object, which will uh, contain all of the information once the user logs in. All right, and then finally, whenever the app loads, uh, identity manager .check sign in status. this method is going to be called, uh, again, on the uh, portal URL that you provided above, which uh, you know if you didn't uh, provide one, will just be arcgis.com, otherwise known as ArcGIS Online, uh, which is what I'm doing here. And then if uh, the user is successfully logged in by the time this loads, I'm running this handle login success uh, function that I created previously. And if not, I'm just console logging. Again, you might want to find something a little more elegant than that. But for the sake of demonstration, uh, that, that's what I'm doing here. So let's uh, head on over to the app. As you can see here, um, very basic. The user is not logged in yet. Uh, the heading just says, welcome to my web app guest, and we've got this button. So uh, let's log into ArcGIS Online and see how this works. So as you can see, I was taken to ArcGIS.com. I'm now on ArcGIS Online. And because we registered our app with ArcGIS Online previously, uh, ArcGIS Online is smart enough to know that, A, it's OK for users to log into this. It's registered and approved with ArcGIS Online in your organization. And it'll also know where to send the user back once they log in. Uh, because I'm already logged into this account, um, I just get this window. But of course, if the user is not logged into ArcGIS Online already, they'll get a username and password uh, box, as you'd expect. So let's go ahead and I will allow this app to access my account and all of my information. And as you can see, <laughs> again, not very gracefully, but I did uh, manage to change the greeting. It says, welcome back, Ben Schrader. Um, and then you can also see where I logged previously all the portal information. And this is sort of all of the methods and properties of the portal that you have access to now that the user's logged in. Um, so as you can see, really, the sky's the limit uh, with what you can do uh, once, once this is all loaded. And I can show you we have a user object, which itself has a full name property. And that's actually what I'm grabbing to populate this. And of course, um, if I did everything correctly, this logout button should do the same thing, just in reverse. And now we're back to a logged out state. Uh, so it's really as simple as that. Once you're actually able to get that plumbing uh, for the login, um, you can, again, access content, access location services, access user and org information, anything that you might need to support the unique workflow of your individual custom web app. Hopefully, I've been able to illustrate how you can leverage existing libraries to make authenticating ArcGIS identities in your web app painless. The code I demonstrated is available for you to reference in our Esri Dev Summit repository on GitHub, so please feel free to have a look at that at your convenience. I mentioned API keys earlier in this presentation, and I'd like to circle back to them briefly to give them the attention they deserve. Think of the difference between API keys and ArcGIS identity like this. ArcGIS identity authenticates a user with your app, while an API key authenticates your app with ArcGIS Online. There are many scenarios where an API key makes sense to leverage. Say you want to create a custom mapping app for your organization with some geocoding capabilities, for instance. It might not make sense to have users log in with their ArcGIS Online accounts just to access geocoding services. 
Instead, you can use an API key to allow anyone using your app to perform geocoding from your organization's service credits directly. This also applies to things like base maps, routing, and even geo enrichment. So consider whether you need users to be logged into your app at all. If that's not the case, API keys can prevent a lot of needless headache down the line. Finally, while a thorough examination of the OAuth 2.0 paradigm and how that works within ArcGIS is well beyond the scope of this session, I wholeheartedly encourage everybody interested in the subject to peruse Esri's extensive documentation on the subject. Of particular interest to front-end developers is the serverless web app workflow section of the ArcGIS developers documentation, which illuminates what's going on under the hood when you utilize something like the ArcGIS API for JavaScript or ArcGIS REST.js to do the heavy lifting for you. If nothing else, I hope this session has helped encourage you to implement ArcGIS authentication in your app, despite how intimidating it might seem on the surface. Everybody here at Esri strives to make the developer experience more seamless, and tools like the ones I've discussed today are a real focal point in achieving that. We're all excited to see what projects you can think up as an ArcGIS developer. Thanks for joining me here today, and happy coding.